Hey everyone, Wynn here and welcome back to my channel. I just want to say thank you so much for liking and subscribing. We're almost to a thousand subscribers and I am just so excited for how this channel is growing, all because of all of you. And if you find yourself in the beginning stages of watercolor, I would love to book a call with you to kind of do a strategy call to see where you're at in watercolor. I have a online watercolor art course that helps beginning artists grow their skill and confidence in watercolor. So if that's you, I'd love to book a call with you and that link is in the description below. All right, so without further ado, let's get to all the tips, tricks, and experiments in watercolor. Let's go. All right, the first thing we're going to cover is the line and wash. So as we were experimenting, I'm gonna throw a lot of things here in front of you. So I have a Sharpie. Um, this Sharpie has a fine tip point to it. So when you're doing line and wash, let's just say, I'm gonna use trees for example, because I love to draw trees. So you're just gonna be doing a quick sketch, just like that, but you can also use um, the thicker side. So let's see what that looks like. If I was just doing some quick trees and had the base to it here. and Okay, so that's what um, a thicker line. And then if you use a Tombow pen, um, which is a little more fine, fine tip, and it's a little softer, has a little give on the end. So if I just did a few lines like that, Okay, and what about just a um, ink pen, just a regular pen that you'd use on paper? Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we have four different types of pens here. And, you know, let's just throw in one more. Uh, this is a Micron fine tip pen, so it's going to be even tinier. Okay, so that's just a little more fine tip. So what I would do for a line and wash is just pretty much grab any color you would like. So let's just go, since we are doing trees, let's go for some permanent, we're gonna go for some permanent green here. Okay, so let's just put some marks, very, very easy, just laying it down real, you can see what happens that the um, the pen is not bleeding through. So it's permanent right on there. So if I just follow some of my marks, so you can see how easy you could paint with line and wash. And it really turns out nice. I really like the line and wash technique. Okay, so that was just with one color using permanent green. So right there, there's an experimentation with line and wash and you can do buildings, cityscapes, landscapes, all sorts of things with that. Okay, moving on. Um, let's see here. Let's go for using unusual things to paint with. So let's paint with a toothbrush. And I found this somewhere and I'm trying to remember what it was used for. I think it was some sort of vacuum a uh, cleaner of or maybe a cleaning part to vacuum and then we have this brush that kind of looks like it. it's a moderna brush and all of the different supplies that I show you today will be in the description below but this is interesting so let's uh I'm using this round Princeton brush just for right now it's in size 10 and I am just going to let's see let's mix some Let's go with some CAD red. Okay, so I'm going to put lots of CAD red, and I have some water already in my palette. So let's just use red for high contrast. And I'm just putting a ton of paint on there and mixing it. So let's dip our toothbrush inside of there. So now we have a red toothbrush. And what happens if I were to just touch the surface like that. See, you can make some interesting patterns. What happens if I literally try to create a wash with it? Okay, so that's nice as well. And then what happens if I literally try to splatter it? Can you see the, the marks there? 
So you can really create some interesting things there. So lots of different techniques just with the toothbrush. And now let's go in with this interesting, I don't know what it is, some sort of cleaning brush. Okay, so you can see how you could create some easy line work uh, with just an unusual, so find, find interesting things at home that maybe you can incorporate into your paintings. And here's the Moderna brush, which also acts just like these other tools. Oh, let me get some more on my... So you can see how it can get really dark with those lines. So I can imagine if you're trying to do some grass or just some brickwork, so this might be a good tool for you. Okay, so moving on, what about pencil? Does pencil, um, how does pencil affect the paper? So let's keep going with this tree idea. And what about like charcoal? Does charcoal mix with paint or pastels? So here's my tree. So let's get a, a vine uh, charcoal here and you can see how thick that is. Okay, let's get that on there. And then here's a interesting an art graph. This is basically dried pigment or black pigment. So it's almost like a, a pan watercolor in a square form. So I'm just gonna use the edge of this. And this is water soluble, which means that you can really mix, you can mix water with it. So it'll absorb into it. And then let's just try one of these uh, pastels here and see, and let's, uh, well, let's just stick with black for right now. Okay. So this is just a straight pastel. And I can imagine this is gonna act a lot like uh, my, charcoal vine okay so let's just add some water to this and see what happens so i'm going to get some of that red off my brush and let's see what happens with this um, let's go back to get some of that green I'm just going to stick with green since it's a tree okay so with oh i have a lot on my brush get some of that water down there okay so it's kind of hard to see your pencil lines through there if i uh, lighten it up a little bit you can probably see it yeah there you go so let me add some more there so what happens with the uh, the vine charcoal you can see how it just absorbs that that charcoal and then what about my, my interesting water soluble? You can see how much richer that is. So look at how it just absorbed. So because of the water soluble uh, type of effect there, it just really went into there. And I'll have a link to that in the description. And let's go for just straight pastel. Okay, pastel works. Um, it doesn't absorb as well as things formulated for water, but you can still cross those over. Okay, so those are the, the four types of dry medium there mixed with wet. Well, that, that one was a, a wet medium. Okay, so moving on. What about your supplies? So I have a Robert E. Wood palette here, and you can see how it has a big mixing area. And I just put this, this water in here for um, basically for the camera, but I can have this whole area to mix in. It has 24 uh, mixing areas there, and it, it's really nice. But what if you're on a budget, and what if you're, um, you know, don't have as much money to buy all these different supplies, well, you can go right over to uh, your local grocery store and 
pick up an egg crate. I found this one at Costco. And you can see how there's, there's literally enough storage for mixing your tray here. So I just cut this one in half here. And this is pretty nice. There's a whole mixing area right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So 12, you can put 12 colors in here. And not bad for an inexpensive, lightweight, on the go uh, mixing area. Even has like a little gap here so your brush could go. So, what you could do is do all your mixing right here and you can dip and just kind of go, go right over there. So, kind of a nice little way to get around. Okay, so if you're working with pencil and you did this nice sketch of these pencil, of this tree and and what if you want to erase? So you can erase, a white eraser will work fine, but also a kneaded eraser. Did you know that there's erasers that look like gum? So it's, it's called a gum eraser. So this gum eraser, it'll absorb the lead and makes for a nice way to take the lead or the, the graphite off of your paper. And then you can just stretch it out just by keep stretching it out and then it'll self clean it. It'll clean itself. So that's a nice little aspect to that. Okay, so I, I like to use these when I'm just doing light touches over my paper and I don't have, you know, a big area to erase. If I'm going to erase really intensely, I'll use this eraser. All right. So what happens? Let's, let's think about paint. Let's go back to paint. So you may have started off painting in pans and like a student grade pan and it turns like this and then they all end up getting really washed out. So the praying is actually not a bad uh, student grade company. Um, if, you, if, it doesn't have the same pigment as, let's say, Daniel Smith or Winsor Newton, uh, professional or fine watercolors, extra fine. So this is going to have a lot more pigment in it, and this is going to have a lot more water. So this will look a lot chalkier in the end. It won't last as long. Um, the light fastness, which means the, the light that's hitting it, will not... It'll fade your projects in the end um, eventually, and these will be more rich and juicy type of colors. So um, that was a Daniel Smith, and this is a professional uh, Winsor Newton. So highly pigmented uh, type of colors. So with that, um, yeah, I would definitely, if you're starting off, it's okay to use inexpensive stuff just to feel what it's like but if you're really trying to get more serious I would use more pigmented richer it may cost a little bit more but uh, if you're trying to get to the next level that's the best way to go in my opinion as far as storage goes so how do you store all of your paints so I've been getting this question so I like to use I think I got this at Michaels or Hobby Lobby but it's a nice thin little box and then I found, I was using mustard <laughs> recently and uh, pretty cool. I can fit quite a bit of my small tubes of paint in this can. So I don't know, there might be 15 or so uh, pan or uh, tubes of paint. These are the smaller tubes, but this is a nice little tin can. If you can find little things like this, um, you know, it's great for traveling. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely hold up over time. All right. And how do you, uh, you know, when you have just a little bit of paint at the end, say like this one, this uh, burnt umber, I still have some in here, but you know, these are really hard to push all the pigment out of the front. And you're like, I know there's still some left in there. So how do you do that? Well. You know, I've done some oil painting in the past, and this tube ringer has been so helpful. So I'll just put my the, the bottom of my tube right in there, and you pinch this together, 
and you basically just wring it out. So let me get a little bit more in there. You, you pinch it down and you just wring it out. So you can see how it, it'll literally force all of the paint to the front and it literally makes this indentation. So now I know exactly how much is left in my tube. And you can get a lot more paint out of your tube. I forget the ratio, but it is quite significant over time. So you're not wasting all of that paint that's in there. And yeah, it's just really hard on your fingers to, to push all of that paint out. So this is called a tube ringer, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Okay, so as we keep experimenting, can you use a dropper to, well, I have, uh, before I, be, before I uh, move on too fast, I have all these crumbs from my uh, things that I've been working on so far. So um, I've showed this in another video, but it is so cool. It is a vacuum cleaner for your desk. So you just turn it on right here and you can just pick up all of the different stuff on your desk. So that is very handy. And so when you're trying to get paint, here's another uh, idea here, experimentation. You can literally soak up some of your paint in a dropper and you can paint with a dropper. I mean, you can spread it around, you can soak it back up, transfer it, soak it back up, transfer it. I mean, there's lots of different things you can do with that. And what about painting with odd items? So here's a here's an ear protection. And I'm literally just making circles with that. Okay, it's nice and soft surface and if you're trying to create a pattern or design, you can use uh, this, you know, an ear protect, ear protector. So those are really nice. Okay, what about using an Expo marker? So would an Expo marker work well with watercolor? Let's take a look. I'm just gonna add straight water to that and see what happens so yeah water does not penetrate through the marker so let me add some yellow and i'm curious if that will make green because remember yellow and blue make green okay slightly so this is just uh, lemon yellow over the top but no it it's not really mixing i mean there's might be a little bit of it so now you know. Um, so moving on, um, what if we have sponges? So you can create lots of interesting things with sponges and creating all sorts of, let me, I'm gonna use some Windsor Green because that's really strong. Okay, so let me just dip that into the sponge and see what patterns I can make with that. Okay, so sponges can come in really handy for uh, foliage and just creating some nice outlines. I mean, that looks like a forest already to me. Okay, so sponges are a lot of fun to use. Uh, just make sure you clean them out after you're done. And since we're on masking and looking at different ideas, I've found that magic tape is really nice for masking off areas. So if I have an area and it's nice and clear, and then also there's this cool uh, thin type of tape. So this thin tape will be able to mask off tiny little areas. Okay. And then we also have another way to mask is Art Masking Fluid by Windsor Newton. This stuff is really cool because it resists 
the color. So you can put down some of this and you can just blow on it and it will dry up and it will not adhere to it. So that's what's cool about that. So now let's go over, I'm gonna use some of my uh, Prussian blue, really nice deep blue. And let's go over these areas and see what happens here. Okay, so let's let that dry for a minute and we'll move on to the next thing here. So while that's drying, did you know that there is a thing called Daniel Smith watercolor ground? Okay, so you can literally, if you've ever wanted to paint, let's say on this tin box, or let's say on a rock, or on your mouse at home, you could literally uh, paint this stuff as a base or watercolor ground and then add watercolor over the top of it. So that's really fun. I have found that it doesn't, um, it, it's a little bit granulating, which means it's not a perfect transfer. So 100% cotton watercolor paper like my arches here will soak up all of your color, but this uh, we'll soak it up to a certain degree and then it, it won't permeate. So um, it will soak it up, but it just looks a slightly more granulating. So don't expect it to work exactly like watercolor paper does. So, but it's pretty cool that you can paint on almost any surface, wood and metal and all sorts of things. So I would try this out. Okay, so now let's pick up this tape right here, this thin tape, and see how well it did. So that is a nice thin line. And let's look at our magic tape there, and that is a very clean line. And now, in order to pick up some of this uh, masking fluid, let's use this little white eraser. And since it was on there super thin, you can see that it worked pretty well, but it could work better if I added even more of the masking fluid on there. So I'm just using a small little Factus eraser. I really like these, and I'll link that in the description as well. Okay, so those are the three methods that I use for masking. Now let's talk about this Dr. P.H. Martin's liquid high strength watercolors. So watercolor can come in pans and pencils, pastels, as you can tell, and it can also come in this wet form. So this is almost like ink, and it's so powerful let me put just a little drop there and I'm gonna add some water to it. So it's literally, look how much pigment is coming off there and I just added just a little bit of water and really nice coverage. I mean, you can create some really interesting things. So a tiny bit goes a long way. Let me zoom out here and see how much more we can get out of this one drop. Okay, so that was quite a bit of pigment that you can get out of just one little drop. So let's, uh, let's add one more drop to the top of that. and see what happens here. Okay, so you can see how quickly that is spreading out. And the cool thing about watercolor is you just put something down and watch it do its thing. So let's zoom back in and look at all the interesting intricate lines that that created. 
I didn't even have to do anything to create a flower-like effect. So the color of that was, the first color was Brilliant Cad Red, and the second one was Cobalt Violet. Okay, and then I just mixed a, quite a bit of water onto there. So I don't even really want to touch this too much because of how interesting the effects, but maybe I'll just add just a tiny bit more water to the edges to draw it out a little bit more. But you can see how interesting the effect was created there. Very simple. Okay, I hope you enjoyed these tips, tricks, and experiments in watercolor. And let me know in the comments below if something struck you as new or you know you learned something new. Um, just let me know what was it. And please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget that I have a online course that takes you from zero confidence to being confident in watercolor. And I'd love to share what that's all about and see if you're a good fit for my program. If you hit the book a call link in the description below, I'll be happy to talk with you and get you going in watercolor. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.